Hey, welcome everybody to another product spotlight. And today's going to be a lot of fun. We have the one, the only Jerry Makahi from Integra joining us today. We're going to talk about what's happening in the industry, where we're headed. And then we got kind of a surprise coming up next month. And when I say surprise, we're going to do a pretty cool round table event. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So with that said, at Dave Cooper Live, we are bringing you the people and the processes that are building it better. Our guests include topics from building systems to building science, building codes, and the tech used to build it better. We are always seeking out the best and the brightest in the construction industry that are doing buildings in innovative ways. So today is no different. Having Mr. Jerry McCahey on is going to be such a pleasure and such a surprise. But first, we got to say a quick shout out to our sponsors, Forward Solutions Group, Ben Hershey, Joe Butler, two of the best in the industry. They are a team with more than 175 years of experience developing and specifying manufacturing for panelized and volumetric industries with best practices in development and implementation. They offer consulting with investors, developers, manufacturers, builders, and using offsite manufacturing methods. Forward Solutions is driving companies to succeed where others have failed. Please reach out to Ben at forwardsolutionsgroup.com for more information. And thank you so much for being a sponsor. All right. With that said, let's get into this. I know everybody's here joining us today. So without further ado, let's bring in the one, the only Jerry McCahey. What's happening, Jerry? Oh, wow. Well, what an introduction, Dave. What an introduction. Only you could do, only you could do that. You see my... Uh... <laughs> Slightly different hat for you this time. I know I don't have that hat. I, well, I need that one, right? Well, we need another actually, repeat picture. I can actually do. I can actually do a little competition for you today. I can actually put up one of these um, for. We'd have to find some question to ask the ask the audience, and also I can also do one of these. These are wow, beautiful. Look at that. I, tops. I can actually have. I have a gray version of it here. So don't say I don't come bearing gifts. <laughs> I come bearing gifts. This is Not only are you going to impart your knowledge and wisdom on us, you're going to give us some swag. I love I'll it. I'll take off my hat and show my bald head. So I wouldn't people think that I was actually trying to hide it. I it's love like, it. I love it. There. So. Well, listen, uh, Jerry, I appreciate you hopping on the show today and uh, joining us for a few minutes, if not the full hour itself. I know you're a busy individual, but you know we, we've been kind of talking off and on. I've been watching all the social <laughs> posts that you're putting out there. Uh, and some of the, there's been some major, major successes that I've been seeing. And I think it's super important to, to talk about, you know, some of the successes that Integra is seeing because you guys are growing leaps and bounds right now. Is that an accurate saying? I think that would be very fair to say. I think that would be yeah. very fair to say. I mean, we've, we've had a, a remarkable, we had a remarkable, I mean, I think everybody in the strips industry, to be fair, benefited and this is you know in some ways it's so ironic sort of benefited from from COVID in the second half of last year and um, that has certainly continued on through the first five weeks of this month it has just been incredible i mean and actually the funny thing, one of the things that i'd say is what, what, what was what was interesting about the COVID shutdown here at least in california where we're really literally we're on sites where the, the cities and the, and the municipalities shut them down so we had no production to go out which was a terrifying experience when you just open a brand new automated facility. But yeah, the funny thing about it, the most ironic thing about it was our inquiry levels during that shutdown went up 350%. Wow. So that was, I mean, it was just, you think about it, we were stopped manufacturing, we were stopped delivering, yet our phones were ringing off the hook, but we couldn't actually, even if we could get the order, we couldn't actually ship it. But it was a funny thing, This, you know, when you think about how or why did that happen? Right. You get a shutdown, you get COVID. All of a sudden, all these people who up to now you couldn't get the time to talk to were phoning you saying, we want to talk to you, even though they actually couldn't even ship the site themselves. But that has sort of played its way through now through the second half of last year and is continuing through this year. So, yeah, it's it's been, it's been incredible. It really has been incredible. Do you think that COVID has made people slow down, stay home, hop on the internet and start researching better ways of doing things or new ways of doing things because they're, they're, they're more tied to their computers now and the internet and social media than they ever have been because they're not traveling on planes, going to meetings. They're tied I mean, to their computers. I think, like I think, the I, yeah, no, I, I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it, but I think that is probably more related, Dave, to other 
sectors of the economy and other um, products. I think COVID definitely had an impact on construction, but I don't think it was because of, I don't think it was because people were, 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 were uh, the buyer who's buying a house, obviously, who's, if you can say connected to construction, they obviously are sitting at home and they're using technology to find the home that they want to live in. But I think for us in the building industry itself, I don't know that that's what significantly changed things. I think it's more to do with the fact it was was that shock of what happened. Yeah. You know, and I think that is you said, and I used to, you know, you get this sudden stop, um, and then people go, "Holy crap! What what do I do?" I mean, I, 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 you know, and it's one of those moments because the the problem is, you know, I've said many times, and it's not my expression; it's the expression of that lady that was in the U.S. Navy said it was the seven most dangerous words in the English language, right? And it, the construction industry is rife with this. That's the way we've always done it. Well, when everything's going along nice and comfortably and actually growing well, that's when you hear it the most. Yeah. That's what we've always done. That's the way we've always done it. And so when you're trying to bring a product like ours to the market with people who are thinking to themselves, well, you know, it's not broken. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I don't need to fix it. That's the kind of expression that you get. All of a sudden, then you get COVID comes on, you get this, fine, it stops. And people go, maybe I need to look around at something different. Yeah. And I think that's what has definitely benefited the, the construction was that shock to the system. Not necessarily the fact that people were on their computers, albeit that they can actually get access to that information, but they were already they were already exposed to the information. They weren't doing anything about it. Yeah. Then something like this comes along, and I think people said, Wow, we, we really do need to look around at the way we're doing things here because COVID, like if you think about it. I, just over one year ago, if somebody had told you that there, there would be a worldwide pandemic that would have people going around in masks everywhere, would you have believed them? No. No. Yeah, you just said they're absolutely completely crazy. And so when you when you get something like that actually happening, it's that's what sort of makes people think, oh, wow, things do change, and we need to change the way we do things. And then the COVID thing to follow on, to, again, not related to the fact that they're sitting in front of a computer, but just the fact that they now had to consider all the things they never considered before. I mean, I can yeah. only put, have the people six foot apart. I have to keep the, the site safe. I have to be clean. I have to do all of these things. I I have to. I now need to get off the site faster because I, I need to to minimize the risk. All of those things started to play into it. So I think well, it's more you know, to do with that. But I mean, how how great is that when it comes to off site, right? Because you know, it's funny. I've I've read so many articles with COVID and dust. And how it sticks to the dust and travels and well, you don't really have a whole lot of solid dust on your sites and, and when we're when no. when you're installing, you know. So, um, so when I say great, the pandemic's not great. But what I've learned from being in the military, being at the World Trade Centers when they come, there's there's always good that comes out of bad. There's it's there's good things that come it's out of it. Wind. It's an ill huh? wind that blows no. Good. It's an ill wind that blows no good. Yeah. The expression that, that, that I grew up with is that yeah, something will come out of it. Right. Uh, right. And, and, and also, when you think about it, something has to come out of it because otherwise the world ceases. So out of everything, no matter what you've gone through, you know, humanity, what humanity has been exposed to. And it, yeah, if you go back to world wars, I mean, we all, the world moved on and it adjusted and adapted and, and, and things happen. And so I think, yes, with COVID, it's an unfortunate situation that happened, but it did certainly have an a, from our perspective, a positive effect um, on the industry. So at Integra, are you guys more focused and more productive now, post COVID starting, before COVID, would you think? More productive, you mean, you mean in terms well, of- just more, more efficient, right? There's less travel, there's there's a lot less, effort. we've had to use new technologies to, to do what we do. You've already were doing it. We were, that, I mean, to us, to us, we were already probably doing all, I mean, you think about it, Dave, we have 55 engineers based in Ireland. So we are hooked. We're, we, we've, we've had to do remote working every single day that we've been in existence because right. it's the only way we can operate. So yeah. everything that we do as a company is set up to operate that way anyway. So to us, doing those kinds of things was not was no shock. We're, we're, we're used to doing that every single day. And, and now I believe most of the people in construction are used to doing it. It doesn't take that long to get used to it. But we were already... We were already in that, and we were, all our systems were set up to actually do that. I mean, the, what it has 
I mean, the one impact that it's really had for us in that sense is that we we basically had our engineers on rotation coming out from Ireland to the US and spending anything from two to six weeks here helping to train people here so we could actually have the equivalent number of people here in our in our Modesto factory. But obviously that that um, travel has been curtailed and that has been a significant uh, impact on, on being able to get people properly trained up. So there, you know, there's the negatives from that perspective, but overall, um, we've worked our way around it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, let's say hi to a couple people real quick, uh, Jerry, because I know once we get into this and you get going, it's going to be the Jerry show. So oh. let's, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Jennifer put up there, no crane, no gain. Love it, Jerry. Damien S. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jerry. Damien Stapleton here. What's hi, happening, Damien. Damien? Thanks for joining us. Joel Hutchins. What's happening, Joel? Hi, Dave, Jerry. Joel. Good to see you, Joel. Ah, uh, great to see legend. See, I told you you're a legend. I don't even have to say it. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. As I said, I don't think I'm quite old enough for that, but maybe some disagree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're definitely, you're, you're still a young buck. Henry Mickelberg. <laughs> we are not worthy. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Tell, tell Henry not to give up his day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. I definitely will tell him, but he'll probably write me some long paragraph as to why he should. All right. Uh, outstanding work, Dave Cooper. Hats off to you and Jerry, your team for being a pioneer in our industry. Appreciate you leading the charge. Well, thank and you, they're Ron. flying in this morning. So we're going to have to get to our conference. Andrew Carpenter, what's happening, Mr. Carpenter? I hope all is well. Good afternoon, Andrew. Yeah, he's a good guy right there. Thanks, Craig Campbell. Hey, guys, what's happening, Craig? All okay. right, we're going to do one more, and then we're jumping in. Jim Stube, hey, what's happening, Jim? Always a pleasure listening to you, Jerry. <laughs> so, all right, clearly, clearly people know you have a sense of humor, and they like you. Now, let's <laughs> <laughs> my wife, partly my wife has told me, and she said this to me at the weekend, you've only been tw you've only been funny twice since I married you. <laughs> so I'm not so sure that I have a sense of humor. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's her view on things. I've been funny twice. Well, let, let's ha let's hope and Henry does. What is Henry Mickelberg's day job? Living up by he's his a guru. Well, he's a guru. Remember that? Like, he calls me a legend. He's a guru. He is the <laughs> he, he, guru. Well, his modesty prevents him from saying that. I learned that the other day. Yeah. But he is. Believe you me, he is. He's yeah, he's no, guru. no, I know, I know. All right. So look, so we got a lot of favorite people on here that are really driving the charge and changing this industry, talking about change. Uh, not only just talking about it, but a lot of people that are doing it are actually uh uh, at least commenting so far. I'm sure there's a lot more out there. Jerry, let's get into this. You're busy. Um, where's your growth coming from? Coming from, And let's talk about why your growth is coming. Like what is what has changed outside of the things we just talked about and people being more aware and what's going on and and taking the time to, 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 to really understand offsite a little bit more. But how are you seeing such growth? And let's talk about the products you're building. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, how do I, how do I, where, where do I start this? I mean, the reason why we're seeing such growth is because I mean, I, I have, I mean, think about this in one sense. My family has been fifty years in offsite construction. I have been thirty years in it, and this is let's say the third uh, business that we've been involved in in terms of offsite construction. And all three businesses are still in existence. All three businesses are still doing are doing extremely well. What's common there is all three businesses do offsite the exact same way. And I think that's the real key to why we're doing well in California is because nobody was doing offsite the way we were doing it or in the way we are doing it in the sense that there, you have, that there is an awful lot of uh, misinformation and disinformation that is put out there about what true offsite is about. Um, and in particular, and, and I, I'm, I don't mean this disparagingly, it's just a fact I mean, components are not offsite construction because to use the expression that I, that I always use in this instrument, if it's not a system, it's not a solution. And the one thing that the two words that go together are offsite and system or solution, I mean, but offsite systems, because you, you have to, for true offsite to bring a benefit to a customer, you have to be responsible yeah. for the totality of the, the, the structural framing of the building. And actually, that doesn't really matter whether it's in light gauge steel or whether it's in SIPs or whether it's in 2x4, 2x6, but it has to be a system. Because otherwise, to, to use what Aristotle said 2,000 years ago, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So if you think that going out and buying 
wall panels off this guy and a floor system off this guy and roof trusses off that guy and this off him and that off the other guy. And you buy the cheapest ones that you can actually physically get to and you put them all together, that, that somehow is going to give you an effective system as opposed to going to one dedicated company whose sole objective is to put themselves in your shoes and build that building as efficiently as possible. It's not going to happen. And that's right. the way offsite has been treated. Certainly on the West Coast, it yeah. has been disaggregated down to its down to the minutia, and therefore there was no possible way for the builder to get the benefit of it. And then what what is what what we suffered for initially at the very beginning was people saying, "Oh, I tried that before, it didn't work," or "I tried walls." And our argument would be, "You tried nothing." I mean, what the hell is the fact that you tried walls got to do with what we do? Right? If you walk around our place and you see the automation, the technology, and the fact that it's a total system, then you understand it. But I mean, I put a post up during the week that said, how do you know so much about something you know so little about, which is the, one of the biggest problems in the construction industry on the West Coast, where people think that they understand what offsite construction is about, and they clearly do not, because nobody has ever used it. All right. so, yeah, all right, so a couple of things. One, we gotta do that T-shirt. How do you know so much about so, so what is that again? <laughs> How do you know so much about something you know so little about? Yeah, I love it. That that's a perfect T-shirt. All right, let me let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna dumb this down for my for myself. And we got people on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch and others out there following us that may not understand what we're talking about. So, for the general idea, when we're talking about a system approach, Jerry, you're saying all right, you just can't take a truss system and say, well, that's that's an offsite system because it's not. It's just the truss, just right. the roof. Right. You can't just take a wall panel and say it's an offsite system. That's just the wall panel. What you're saying is you got to take these separate components that are still built offsite and bring them together and systemize the approach to get the maximum efficiency out of all of those systems at one time versus individually. Correct. That is correct. And it goes back to one expression. And I know we're going to touch on this later on about some other program maybe coming up to, but it comes down to one thing in terms of of where is the benefit and the, the cost benefit of offsite construction. And it comes down to this one expression. The profit is in the process. Yeah. And you can only get that when you're dealing with a system. That's right. It's the process. It's it's the process that delivers the benefit. And the, to, to have the process, you and that's the same as, that's what modular is. It's, it's much easier for people to understand modular because that really is a true system because you actually have everything integrated into the module or the box and, it's, and you're coming out and it's, and it's right. completely put together. We're a step back from that. But nonetheless, when you come to us for the building, we're giving you every single part of that structure. And, that and we have done a model of that. Building. We, we have, albeit we haven't built the module in the factory, we've built the building in a 3D system in in on our computer system and then we have brought that and every single element that's in that building we have then subsequently manufactured to fit together perfectly yeah that gives the system and we have looked for the for the for the for the any any obstacles clashes benefits improvements i mean right down to the fact that like we one of our one of the things that we do com compared to say guys who make walls we we will we try to limit the number of walls we deliver to a site so we'll make them as big as we can make them I mean, Jim's on there, he's supplied us with the Wyman equipment. I mean, we'll yeah. make walls up to 37 feet long, fully sheared. Yeah, yeah. Because, That's a semi truck. Yes, because it's the system. But the reason yeah. being is, why would, why would I make three walls and put them all together on the side if I can make one? I got a I mean, question. I got a question. Fire. You said shear walls. And we're going to get in, we're going to get into the second part about what you're building, you know, types of projects. But when you build a 37 foot long shear wall, like wall system versus in 10 foot sections or 12 foot sections, do you get more benefits from the engineering and having less lumber because you have less joints and seams than if you're using smaller on site penalization process? Yes, you do, but that's not the reason to do it. Right? I mean, uh, again, enlighten me. Well, yes, you do, but that's not significant enough in terms of cost. When you look at the cost, the cost is, in, is is on the site. I mean, that's when you get onto that building site and you have five guys standing around, whether or not you're stick framing or not, and you're and you see these guys and, there, and there's posts them all over YouTube and TikTok trying to lift up these walls and walls collapsing down them. And there's five, six, seven. Sometimes I've, I've counted one where there was nine guys trying to lift a wall, and we can take a one. 37 foot long wall and manipulate it with, it with one finger with a crane on it and drop it into position. And you think about that's one guy. Now there will be two guys or three guys on it, but there isn't five or six. 
they're off somewhere else on the site doing something. So when you weigh up the cost benefits of the site cost, the labor on the site cost, through the efficiency of being able to use that one large wall, that's where the benefit is. Yes, you, what you said, Dave, is true. And that's just another piece you add to say, well, I've saved cost there. But everything's focused on bringing on-site efficiency from the use of off-site techniques. Yep. Are you seeing manufacturers uh, coming up, suppliers, manufacturers, raw material companies? If you're going to build a 37-foot wall, does that mean they can build a you know a 10-foot by 37-foot sheet of plywood to put on that wall? Theory, yes. That is correct. That's what they could do. And, and, and we are having these discussions with manufacturers at the moment. Oh, yeah. the, is, the reason why you have an 8x4 sheet and a 9x4 sheet and a 10x4 sheet is because Harry. you can lift it. That's the reason why, because yeah. somebody can manhandle it. We don't sure. need to worry about that. We can lift the largest sheet you can make. So I would prefer, I would love to see sheets that, that are made so, probably in the region of about 16 feet. Yeah. So if I can get a 16 foot long by 8 foot higher, or 16 foot by 9 foot higher, that would make life so much more. And then you save more money again by taking out lumber out, out, out of the out of it and nails out of it and having just a, a far better, more rigid structure. So yeah. these are all things that actually some of the manufacturers in Europe are already doing this. So even Andrew who's on there and Henry would probably be aware of it. And I think some of the, some of the actually to be fair, some of you modular guys actually get larger sheets as well. Yeah. So, um, but those are all things. Yes, that, that we would we would definitely benefit from and and give more benefit to our customer. Love it, love it. Well, listen, um, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Jerry, you on Twitch yet? I haven't heard of Twitch, but I, I listen. I have to tell you, you, you put you made me go on TikTok. I know and, you're killing it. I, I, I know, yeah, you're getting a lot of views on TikTok. Yeah, five hundred. Was it? Was it fifty? Fifty-five thousand views on something there recently? Now, that to be fair, shout out to Juan here in the in the office. He's, yeah, the man, yeah. he's the man who did that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been seeing it. Yeah, TikTok's been a lot of fun. We have some that are almost at 100,000 views. Wow. It's, uh, and we're just taking, you know, what we're doing. We're, I'm not dancing, but you know what? You and I, next time we're together, we're going to do a TikTok <laughs> dance together. I'll do, I'll, do I'll do the Irish version. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, all right, so listen, we're on Twitch because that's where the young people are as well, Jerry. We've gone to Twitch now because Twitch is the big gaming platform for young people. So you want you want young people that understand VR, AR, get uh, coding and setting things up like that. I'm just trying to reach out to where they are. We need more of them in our industry. We need more wands in our industry. Juan, Juan, Juan's got it going on. You bring up you bring up another valid point, David. I mean, I mean, people talk about. The way we use LinkedIn and, and, and Instagram and Facebook and stuff. And I'd say this to everybody out there. Guys, if you're not using it, you are really missing a massive opportunity. Yeah. Massive. It, it, it is, it'll, <laughs> you can cut your mark, you can cut your advertising budget virtually down to zero if you do it properly. It's, it's, yeah. an, it's incredible what, what can be achieved on it. So I just yeah, said, it really. You know what, Jerry? You don't even know this, but my entire uh, Tech Bytes conversation at the NAHB IBSX is uh, inbound marketing, and I I do a I do a ten step process, and I walk everybody through how powerful this is. You know, because you're on it all the time. There's a reason you're using it all the time. There's a reason that you know our the previous president used social media, and the ones going forward are going to be using it. This is where people's at when you. When you have platforms like this that can change our democracy and they are brought into the floor of the Senate and Congress and testifying, um, you know, you got to be there. If you're a business, you got to be here. Yeah. All right. No politics. Let's get into this here. What 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 are you guys building? Like so you, you say you guys are growing and you've got so much work coming in. Let's talk about what type of product you're you're designing and building. OK, so I give you a little bit of history. So when we started in California. We, we actually limited ourselves to single family. And the reason why we, did, why, why we actually did that was because our question that we kept asking ourselves when we came into the market is, why are they not building offsite? And we were terrified that there was something that we didn't know or, or were missing, or there was maybe there was a, 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 um, a culture, was it a cultural reason? Was it a regulatory reason? What was it? Um, and so we said, well, let's try. Let's start off in single family. And if something crops up here that says we can't do in the United States what we did in Europe, at least if we have to exit the market, we're not going to have got ourselves too far down the rabbit hole and we can get ourselves back out of it again. So we started off in single family, seeing what were we going to come up against any obstacles. And as it turned out, we weren't. In fact, the reactions we were getting from people 
was ab- was absolutely incredible. I mean, when people saw a house going up the plate level in one day, like I can remember people beforehand saying, it's impossible, it can't be done, nobody has ever done it, you'll never do it, and even if you do do it, it'll only be once, you can't repeat it, all this kind of stuff was going on. And then we kept doing it, because remember, we'd been doing it for 30 years. So to us, when people were telling us you can't do it, we're going, well, that's complete rubbish. It's been done in the UK and Ireland and all over Europe, and every single day. That's just the way that it's done. So we we, we stuck to that until such times we said, okay, we're now 100% comfortable that there's nothing in this market. When I should, in the meantime, when we were doing that, we then we started to investigate the whole area of multifamily, multi-story buildings to see, was there anything in there that would inhibit us? Now, we were used to doing it from Europe as well. I mean, we'd actually been involved in my previous company in, in, in the, world's, the development of the world's first six-story wood frame building, which is called the TF2000 project at BRE Cardington, which basically broke the, broke the rules and, and changed the codes in the UK for medium-rise uh, wood frame buildings. So we started looking at that while we were, while we were continuing uh, our market penetration with single family. We then said, okay, it's now time to pivot and start looking at multifamily, which we have done. And that has, I mean, that has just taken off. I mean, it's just been incredible, the reaction we've got. And we started off with fairly small buildings. I mean, then they yeah. have, it is just, I mean, we just finished a, a building there, 272,000 square feet. 270, wow. 270 apartments in 13 weeks. 13 weeks? 13 weeks. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm just going over here to uh, to to your website because I think you had uh, on your YouTube channel, I think you had yeah. that posted up there, did you not? I know it was on YouTube or certainly on LinkedIn, but that, that yeah. the, the, builder, the builder in that project told us himself, we saved them $600,000. Now, put that out there. Yeah. $600,000. Dollars. Now, there's no stick framer, no matter how cheap he wants to go in that, he's going to, he's going to undercut that value. He's not undercutting us, but he's not going to be able to undercut to the point that he gives the builder back $600,000. And that's, where, that's where, where builders are seeing the real benefit of doing this. And now we have multiples of those, of those projects in our books. Right. So the one, the one thing that, that, that I think and is true that is happening and, and is what I used to say to our, our sales guys in, in, in Europe years ago is, I, well, the way we call timber frame the the word for offsite in Europe because if it's if it's wood in in Europe it's built offsite. So we used to say to our guys, the more timber frame that's built, the more timber frame that will be built. And so I said to our guys here is the more offsite that's built, the more offsite that will be built, because that proves the point. Because yeah. up to now, what we've been trying to do is defeat the misinformation and the disinformation. And every building that goes up is another nail in the coffin of the misinformation that's actually out there. And mm-hmm. so. There's nothing greater than actually physically seeing the building built. And that building that we that we did, the 270,000 square feet, is right on the side of the freeway. <laughs> I mean, there must be hundreds of thousands of cars going by that every day. So, yeah. Well, I mean, $600,000 is a big statement. It's not mm-hmm. a, it's not $100,000 on it. But, I mean, we're talking, you know, over a half a million dollars saved just by using Fios. That is correct. That is one hundred percent. That has to make investors pretty damn happy. I can actually even tell you better than that. We saved the builder close on a million dollars on top of that on lumber management because we advised him when he came into it that we think he should lock his lumber now, even though he was six months out from going on site. Yep. And we went and locked it for him, bought it, yeah. put it in the yard. And so as lumber, we bought the lumber for that project at our, in, in the 400s. By the time that project was being finished, it was over 1,000. So, yeah, I mean, all right. So for everybody out there listening, the lumber prices have been going through the roof. And, and what you're saying is you're buying it by the train loads at the lowest price when you buy it, which does not make you subjective to the current price when it's time to build it. That's correct. That right? is correct. That, that's a huge thing, especially lumber's up. You know what? A uh, seventy-five, one hundred and seventy-five percent, or something. I mean, it's doubled. Well, you tripled. can actually say it's, you can actually say it is nearly it is nearly tripled. It, tripled, uh, yeah. It is nearly tripled. It's yeah, it's over it's over two hundred percent. It's up. Yeah, so, which, which is which is amazing. So we're not going to get too in the weeds on where the savings are because we're going to save that conversation for next month. Uh, the date's going to come out, everyone. But uh, Jerry and I were talking, and uh, even Henry, I, I had Henry on the phone. We're talking about uh, having a roundtable 
with uh, Greg Ugaldi at the National Association of Home Builders and really talking about what are the benefits and savings are there savings? According to this conversation, there's major savings. I know from my world of 20 years of modular, there's a lot of savings when you look at the entire life cycle of a project. So uh, this is going to be exciting. Once uh, IBS is over, we're going to announce the date that we're going to get together. But uh, you don't want to miss this one. And we may have some other guests on as well. But we're really going to sit down and have a real conversation on cost and why, why it makes sense on offsite construction. So, all right, Jerry. All right, you started off on single family. Now you're in multifamily. You're saving hundreds of thousands, if not oh, half a million dollar plus for builders. Um, what, what's, what are you seeing for the future right now? Are you seeing strong market? Absolutely. I mean, I, it's, I mean, what, what's, what's, what's great for us, I suppose now is again, going back to this thing of, we had to disprove the disinformation is the amount of work that we have this repeat repeat work and I'm doing multiple different communities for the same builder is incredible. So yeah. it was that point, all we had, I mean, I used to say that, that it's the hardest job I have is selling it the first time. That's really my hardest job. Um, and uh, that, that's what, that's been proven here. I mean, we have multiple builders. Uh, we're, well, actually, we, like we have builders there that we're in four different communities with. Now, mm -hmm. I asked this question to people out there who are naysayers. Why would a builder give us four communities? If he wasn't making more money using offsite construction, yeah, right. Remember, three years ago he was stick framing those sites, and today he's using FIOS on four of them. Why? Do you think he wants to lose money? No, he's done. The, he's done. He has done the due diligence, and he's figured this makes sense. And again, we're not going to do too much because of the problem. But it, it also, you have to you have to have the sense to look to understand where your costs are. Yeah. Right. And what happens in a lot of cases, you know, you have a, a buyer who's, oh, and to be fair to them, they're only tasked with buying the widget at the cheapest price they can buy the widget. So if they buy it this year at a half a cent cheaper than they bought it last year, that's right. But, but it takes three hours longer on the site to install that widget, they've still done their job correctly, even though overall the costs have actually gone up. Mm -hmm. And I think flipping that around, that's where we're off. Again, I don't want to go into too much here, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of savings there that more and more builders are now starting to understand property as they use the system. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. And I would imagine it's given you all kinds of data to actually share. And, and when you get in these larger builds in the larger communities with people in this country that are building it give, I mean, that that's just got to give you so much data and so much. Well, here's the savings. You're probably even seeing savings you didn't even know were there yet. Well, we have we have a, we have had two builders, two national home builders who have actually had to deliver presentations to their yep. boards, and um, not and their boards are not in California, but to their boards about using our system. And both builders, as we've seen the reports, delivered the reports to say that they were making more money using FIAS than the R stick frame. And they went into it in great detail as to where they were actually getting it. And I, I give you, I give you some of the highlights. And there's one of them where, where there's a, a multifamily building that they do, and there's six units in it. They're like townhomes, mm -hmm. and they build a certain energy code. And every every time they built those buildings, in order to hit, hit the air change, they've had to go in there and use this air seal, this blown material. I can't remember the name of it. And they put it in, and then it finds the leak in the building and it seals it. Right. They've been building multifamily now in this particular area for, and not this one bigger building, but buildings like this for going on 10, 15 years. Yeah. This time is the first time they've never had to use an air seal on it. We met the air change standard without using any additional materials. I think it's aerospray or aero seal. Yeah, so it's, something, it's something like that. Yeah, now, yeah. That, that alone saved them because it's a, it's a dollar per square foot apparently. So, so we you're were, telling me that you are cutting – the lumber and putting it together so tight with the proper technique that now you're reducing your cost on having to meet energy code with sealing up with, with third party system, third party applications, because you're taking care of that with the, with the, with the factory. Because, building of, the accuracy, because of the accuracy and precision of the system. Yep. Wow. And that is, off, that is offsite construction. That's not me. That, that's the benefit of offsite construction. That's the benefit of modular. You can produce, like, and, and this just simply makes makes lot makes common sense. You simply can't build to the same standards on site that you can build in a factory. 
That's right. I mean, think about it. You can't tell me you can take a skill saw and cut a hundred pieces to the same accuracy as somebody in a modular factory or an offsite factory like ours that's sending sending information to CNC equipment and cutting precisely. That saw is going to cut it all day long, every every day, the exact same way, to precision. Yep. I mean, it's there's no way you can do it. And then when you add in California is that our buildings are all full. We no, no matter whether the, whether the engineer says it or not, we sheet would fully wrap or shear the outside of the building completely always because mm -hmm. in europe it would be unheard of to do anything else and to us right. i don't care if, if i lose the job because uh, i i'm a little bit more expensive because i have fully sheared the building i'm happy to do that because i will not put that quality of building out with my name on it it has to be fully wrapped so you can see when you that's why you'll see with an case we'll make sure we put our brand on the outside of the building and we say is you know yeah. make sure it takes the name on the frame because you're going to know it's ours because we're always fully sheared. And now what I see is that some of the builders who are competing with our customers are having to do that because they're getting asked questions by the guy next door who can see straight through the house, which you know, think about doing that in an earthquake zone. I mean, think about building a right. building right. and not using every section of the wall to get yourself the maximum strength you can get because you want to save 300 bucks on a house costing $400,000. Yeah, for it's sure. Sensical. And yet then they won't look and see is how much does it cost every day of cycle time costing them on site? Because if they actually counted the cycle time cost, they can realize that put our shear is actually well and truly paid for by the fact that we've saved it for them on their cycle time. But again, that goes to another day's discussion, Dave, that we, we, we can get into. But there's no, we're definitely going to have that. Let, let's, get to some, there. let's get some comments here real quick. Um, all right, Joel Hutchins up. Uh, did that one already. Your logic and thoughts on systems is based on the uh, disjointed nature in which we design. Offsite can be components if they are designed correctly, not as standardized, standardized elements. And the process starts in the design intent. Well, we, we'll, have, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one because the problem is when you go to put them all together and then something doesn't fit and who's responsible and, and getting, all that getting all that accuracy in it. Unless my opinion... And again, it's an opinion, but it's opinion based on 30 years of experience. Unless you have actually been there and de developed the 3D model and been responsible for all of the components going into it, it's very hard because it's very hard to get two, three or four people in, in an office to talk to each other to make sure that they've, they've given everybody all the information. It's a hell of a lot more difficult. You've got a guy over here and a guy 30 miles down the road and another guy somewhere else here to make sure that everything has been coordinated and you get it right every single time. So... I'll have to disagree slightly with Joel and that I respect where he's coming from on it. And I, and I do agree with you. The design part of it is cru crucially important. And he's right in the sense that design is disjointed. And when you do bring it all together and somebody understands what they're doing, you can certainly make a lot of improvements, but nothing will beat having it done as a system by the same company. So what you're saying is business is easy until people get involved. Got uh, it. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. I love it. Damien says in the car industry, an industry that you refer to often, they don't make all components in house. They import components from strategic partners. Do you have strategic partners for your offsite system? That is that is true. But those those um, those um, manufacturers have tended to have to make it to the exact specifications of the car manufacturer who send them their specifications that is to be made to not rely on the, the manufacturer to come up with it and on top of that in most of those cases the car manufacturers have their own people in those factories as well so they are supervising to make sure that the components that are being made there to come to the main factory are actually up to up to the standard and, and do what they're supposed to do so you know when people look at these things they have to understand what how manufacturing works and that's how the car manufacturers do it and um, but they all still remember all of those items then to come back to make that car are still all being put together by the one company. They still come together. They make sure when they come together to go out that the customer is buying that car has bought it from one company. In other words, you're not buying the you're not in that case buying the wheels off a wheel manufacturer or the steering wheel off another one manufacturer or the seats off somebody else, even though they've been made by separate people. You're still buying it off the one car manufacturer. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Great answer. Great question, Damien. Here's what well, Damien's he's busy today. Once a developer has signed a contract, he can't make one penny more from the sale. So build as fast as possible to get your profit back into your account to get working for you faster. Can't argue with that. 100% true. 
Henry Mickelberg, I knew he wouldn't stay quiet for long. How are how are you quantifying the time and cost benefits to prove rather than antidotally your value proposition? Well, we, we do that by conversations with our builders. So, and again, we have the reports from two of them um, that they've given us where they've done the detailed analysis uh, themselves. So we, ha we actually have that. We also have, we also have had discussions with people, the trades that actually work on our, work on our, um, work on our buildings that we supply to ask them how they feel about working on it and trying to get the benefits that are to them. And I'll give you again, another example of this. So this is not anecdotal. This is a fact. So on a project that we're about to start now, with, it'll be starting now in the Sacramento area within the next uh, six weeks. The builder on that project went to his trades and said to them, if you're the trade on this new, new development and we stick frame it or we use Integra, now they've already been working on Integra sites and they've worked on stick frame sites, will you give us any reduction in the cost for the fact that it's in tech reverse stick frame? And the answer was yes. Now the amounts of money are small, and in some cases it amounts to like $20 per house for say the electrician, or I think the plumber was actually willing, the plumber I think was actually willing to give $50, but they're actually giving a reduction to the builder for yeah. the builder to use the Integra system because two reasons, because they know that every time they go to go into that house, it's going to be ready. And two, they know that every house is going to be exactly the same. So their men are fully employed. So they get more productivity when they're putting their men into an Integra development than they do onto a stick frame development. And they're willing to give a bit of payback to the builder. So we're, we're seeing it in multiple different cases, how the benefit is being delivered and how the costs are actually, are actually flowing through. Yeah, no, for sure. I Listen. We're going to get into this conversation uh, next month even deeper, but I, I I agree with you. I think, you know, the over even from a banking like you said standpoint, finance standpoint, there's a whole lot more secure product when using a systemized approach than using you know waiting for the plumber, waiting for the electrician, waiting for the framer, right? There 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 there's value add all the way through the value chain. Correct. That in, that includes all the way to like you said investors and bankers and everybody else in between. And also, you think about, I'll give you another, to answer Henry's question, maybe a little bit more specifically. So we took over a project in the in the core Bay Area, um, overlooking, basically overlooking San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Bay, four-story homes. Okay. The stick framer was taking, these are these are luxury, I mean, these, these things are selling at $1.8 million a piece. The stick framer was, and they're extremely complicated. The stick framer was taking 60 days to frame the houses. Mm-hmm. And think about that, 60, 60. Yeah, yeah. We went in on that site, and we're putting the frames up in two days, roof on. And, we're, and now they are very complicated. There's a lot of pickup offers. It takes us another eight days after that in, in the pickup. So we're out, of, we're out of there in 10 days versus 60. Wow. The developer, isn't it? The developer, who's a very, very large, one of the largest home builders in the United States, the developer in there told us, the cost per day, the carrying cost per day on that site is $2,000 per day per house. Well, now, how it does not take a brain cell. There, there are 60 houses on that site. 60. It does wow. not take a brain cell to figure out how much how much we're, we're benefit we're delivering to that builder. So we took up a, another builder to see that development. For a project further up in Northern California, in the, in the in the fire region where the fires were, and we're about to start that project actually in three weeks' time. When he was on the site and he was watching this, and and and, and he came up and he said, "Because I, I didn't believe you could actually do it," and he actually said to us, "said my carrying cost, my his carrying cost, is just under a thousand dollars per day, per house, per house." Now we're going to get his houses up. We're going to save him. This is, we're probably going to save him at least. 15 days on a cycle time on each house directly. And then because of the accuracy, precision, and the scheduling capabilities that we have, there's probably going to be another 10 to 15 days knocked off that. So you think about the amount of money that he's, additional profit that he can actually make. Yeah, he's, yeah. Already, he's already now in discussions to give us another job, and we haven't even started the first job. Because he's done it. But the reason why that is, his guys, his accountants are doing the figures. Yep. They're, they're saying, well, if this is the case, this is what it drives to the bottom line. And so when you ask me the question, why are we getting busier? That's why we're getting busier, Dave. 
because the truth is now out there, right? And the profit is in the process. If we make the building more efficient, the builder makes more money. What we had to get them off was the idea that, yeah, this stick frame is 30,000 and you're 35,000. So what? Right. If I deliver you 15,000 in benefits and you're still $10,000 better off. But the problem is a buyer sitting in an office, as we said before, who, who only is only who's only been tasked with buying the widget cheaper, doesn't care. They, they don't care about operations out on the site. And in fact, we've seen also that problem with builders. We have, we have another builder who really wants to use this, and the operations guy and the and the purchaser are having actually a head to head because the purchaser goes, "I don't care. I literally don't care." So th oh. those are the kinds of things that are going on. But the more we do it, the more the information gets back. The more the builders talk to each other, and we know they're talking to each other in the background. The more the truth. Gonna, is there. I, I gotta I gotta play something, Jerry. This is good, right? You ready for this? Fire away. Just tell me, what can I do for you? It's a very personal, very important thing. Are you ready, Jim? What makes you ready, brother? Here it is. Show me the money. <laughs> right? That's what it is. It? When he comes down to the building. That's exactly it. Show me the money. And that's... That's what it comes down to. Show you the money. Oh, no, no. You can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it what you mean it, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I better hear you say it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Show you the money. God, not so you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Sorry about that, Jerry. I hope I didn't. Yeah, that's all right. His name is Jerry. And he's got an Irish last name, too, in that movie. So, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but, but Dave, that's what it's about. That's what we're all in business about. Yeah. Like everybody's in business about making. I mean, I said to right. people, I said a bit to people, um, you know, when I was doing mentoring in, in, for small business in Ireland, and I said, I'd ask everybody the first time, what's your definition of a business? I know you get all these long winded expressions and you get people saying they're here for the good of society, this, that, and the other. No, it comes down to one thing, one line. And it's the definition of a business is an organization that exists to make a profit. Yeah. As long as you remember that, then you can do all the good things for society once you're making your profit. But never forget that's what it is. So when you're talking to builders, we've got to show them the profit. That's right. why you go back to the profits in the process. The profit's not in the fact that some some stick framer is you know a couple of thousand dollars cheaper than we are apparently at first cost. The reality, it's a bit like another analogy I use. I guess imagine imagine you, you were you were in a car race, and they they. Uh, the prize money for, for winning the race was a hundred thousand dollars. And one car you could buy there was the, you could buy a car at thirty thousand dollars or you could buy a car at fifty thousand dollars. They could both get out around the track, but one one was faster than the other. Well you buy the car at thirty thousand dollars, yeah you'd save twenty thousand dollars, but you lose the race. So yeah. you lose the hundred thousand. And that's what it's about. Offsite construction is the formula one of framing. We oh, wow. get you there faster. And we get you there in a much higher quality way, and you make you get the prize at the end. That's and the prize is making the making the profit. Love it. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to convince Jennifer as to why I need the hundred thousand dollar car now. That was perfect. Uh, well, you see, new, you see that new Audi? You see that new electric Audi that came out yesterday? <laughs> no, I did not. Is it nice? Yeah, is it nice? Yeah, look, look at that. It's now become my. That's now become the car I want. Oh, is it? I want to take yeah, a look yeah. at it. You're, you're gonna have to take it in tech Eton, route. Now. Eton GT. Wow! So. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. All right, let's get to some more uh, comments here, and let's just see what's going on. Damien says buying lumber in advance is great once lumber prices don't fall back. This is true. Yeah. Henry yeah. says apparently we collectively. Oh, you're gonna say something, Jerry? Go ahead. Yeah, but, yeah, but you, you also can. I don't want to go into this in too much, but you also can use hedging techniques and financial instruments to protect yourself in that case. So That's right. Just said, one way to skin that cat. Apparently, we are collectively divulging secret sauce next month. So I've deleted my question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, Craig Campbell, Defo, definitely easier designing the the kit as a full kit, including walls, roof, and floors. More control, less hassle. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, and Joel says, sounds like you need a bigger. Um, Boat, Jerry. <laughs> those those Wyman machines will be running hot. Yeah, they're they're running pretty hot at the moment. <laughs> so and they're going they're going to get hotter. We did. I'll put it to you. We're we we have sold sixty six percent of our capacity for two thousand and 
2021. Have you really? Yeah, and we're we're five weeks into the we're five weeks into the year. We Good sold six percent of our capacity. Well, you know, the success of this is really, really uh, what we want to keep highlighting, and and why you know I wanted you on the show today because. You know, with, with so much going on, with so much attention on offsite, we need to keep our foot on the gas. We need to keep driving forward. It, it You know, success stories, the data that you're collecting, using this information to help us form and tell the factual story, right? Not a fiction, a factual fiction. story as to what's happening. And the more we can talk about it, the more we can share successes, whether it's panelized, modular, concrete, whatever it is, System wise, um, the further faster we're going to go. Absolutely. I mean, and there, I mean, I mean, a lot of the people here who are on here who are commenting. I mean, these are experts in their field. I mean, these. Yeah. There's a lot of people out here. I think, and this is the great thing about your channel, is up to now it was very hard for anybody to get that information out into the marketplace. Yep. Now we have a channel through you to be able to get this out there, so people. So again, I'm throwing this out here, and I'm and I'm saying. You're a stick framer, or you are you're a builder that thinks you've used offset before, and you think I'm wrong. Well, then come on here and go head to head with me. You I'm know, willing to. I'm willing to. My re I'm willing to put my reputation on the line. Go head to head with me. If you think I've said something wrong that I can't prove it, come here and go head to head with me. We know offsite works. I mean, I've, I've been, I've done somewhere in the region of, of our my family is somewhere in the region of about 175,000 offsite buildings in, in in our lifetime and my and my dad's previous lifetime. We know this works. I mean, Andrew Carpenter's on there represents one of the biggest uh, organizations of offsite offsite companies in in the, in the world out of the out of the UK. And those guys are doing. You should see some of the buildings some of those companies are doing. I mean, it's an absolutely they're staggering in, in in the quality and the size and the scale. And they haven't they didn't start last week. They've been at it for 30, 40 years. So when people say it doesn't work, hey, let's again to go back to that expression. How do you know so much about something you know so little about? How do you know so much about something you know so little about? I love it. That's now my new expression as well. Jerry, listen, I have to tell you, the gauntlet has been thrown. So I'm happy. Let's let's let's, let's do see. This is another this is another discussion that I think you know I've been wanting to put out there. Let's get some production builders or stick builders or custom builders on the show with us and have a conversation because there are a lot of people that have tried offsite. There are a lot of people that have tried uh, modular. Uh, 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 there aren't a lot of people who have tried offsite. Well, like, so in my world, I've met a lot of people in my world that, have, that have tried modular. We'll stick with modular for right okay. now. And it went miserable for them. Right, I'll never do that again. That was garbage. Things didn't line up, da, da, da. You know, the, 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 whole, the whole nine yards. And, and, and mostly it's because they didn't have a system. They didn't understand the system. Understand they were trying to run their jobs like they were running a regular construction site. And that was part of the problem. So I, I hear what you're saying about globally, not a lot of people have tried true offsite, but the peop, there are a lot of people that have tried it and didn't have good success with it because they didn't have the right tools in place and the right knowledge. So the right, the right, the right knowledge, I mean, the, the, thing, the thing is, I've said this before as well, you know, you can't, if you've been doing something a certain way for 20, 30 years, and then you, you move to a system like modular or, or, or our type of offsite, and you think that you can simply overlay all your systems and processes on top of that, and that everything's going to work, it's doomed to failure. Yeah. Doomed. You've got to be willing to understand what it is that you need to change, and preferably, Preferably, you should have brought somebody in to your organization if you're really committed to this who understands what it is you're about to do so that they can actually guide you before. They, they can be the radar ahead to actually say, no, you need to watch out for this because that's where that's where it feels. It's not that the module of the offsite system didn't work. It's that the people who were trying to implement it didn't understand the process. Yeah. Right. Because when you look at the people who are doing it and who are experienced at it and it is working, well, QED, it works. Right, so you really have to go back and ask yourself and be honest to yourself. With the question is, maybe it didn't work not because there was anything wrong with the system, but it was wrong with what was wrong with the way we approached it. And that's understandable. And it's very hard for anybody to get anything right the first time. So you know they shouldn't necessarily give up or fail. They should actually take it on the chin and say, okay, there's there's lessons to be learned here, and what are they? But in many cases, what happens is you get a knee jerk reaction to go back and say, no, I'm not. I don't. I'm not even willing to analyze the. the the, yeah. the mistakes and just go back to what the, what what the way they were doing it before and like 
again, for, for what it's worth, we're, we, we, we've started a, a, um, a four-story, there's 10 buildings, 10 four-story apartment buildings in, actually, they're condos in uh, uh, in Dublin here in, in California. And we started on such a week. Now, I have to say that the, the way that the builder, who's a national home builder, the way he approached that was absolutely incredible. I mean, the, absolutely the way that it should be done. Because right. what that builder did was, he went and he got a, a, um, a project manager who had worked on offsite construction before, and we had worked with him before as well. And he got him and he employed him. So he said, I'm going down this route. I see the benefits of this is done correctly. So you think about, think about now this is an approach. So here's a builder, and he says, I know offsite construction works but I've got to make sure I get the things right lined up on my side. So he goes off and he employs a project manager who's familiar with offsite construction, who's now an employee of his, who can talk face to face with us and argue the point and we can talk to him. We both know we're both on the same, we're both on the same playing field. Right. Then on, then on, 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 on top of, sorry, then what he did was he got his architect involved and his engineer involved and he went to them and said, I'm going down this road with this, this road with Integra. I need you now to do everything we can here to make this as beneficial for them as is possible. Now, what we mean by that is we didn't need to change anything, but one of the arguments we have all the time is the architects not putting correct dimensions on drawings, and then us, us having to go back and spend weeks and hours and time, months trying to figure out what they meant, and this doesn't work there because they hadn't thought it. Said, go back, figure it out yourselves, but listen to these guys, and when they say they need a response, respond to them quickly, and let's get this sorted. So he got in himself into the weeds, got them involved in it, and then what he went off and he did was he employed a superintendent who had worked on another, actually another offsite job that we had worked on. So he put a guy on the ground who actually knows how the system works. And he's the guy now that deals with the trades because he knows how to deal with them. He, and he's dealing with the concrete guys to make sure, that, make sure they get the slabs and everything else in correctly. And so the approach that he has was one of, I'm going to make everything, I'm going to make the infrastructure around all of this in my organization work for offsite construction. And I can tell you, this building, these buildings are, are, when I say bloody awkward, I mean they are bloody awkward. And it's no wonder that, that the, the stick framer did, uh, actually, this is another one that the stick framer started on. The stick framers are no longer on it because it's it's not an easy, it, when we 3D model this building, we're looking at it going, my God, this is not an easy thing to pull off. So, you oh. know, but his approach, when you think about the way he approached it, that's how you make money and that's how you make the system work. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, this has been a great conversation, Jerry. Can you believe it's been an hour already? Man, time flies when I'm hanging out with you. Wow. I love uh, it. I love it. I Let's get to a couple more. Oh, listen, it's the Jerry show. I love it. I love it. Hey, listen, let's get to a couple more conversa or a couple more uh, comments here. Jim Stube, Jerry's right. It's encouraging to have a host like you, Dave, to bring the experience and voice of the industry like Jerry brings. Thank you both. Keep up the good work. Thumbs up to you, uh, Jim. Thank you so much for uh, just supporting us and the kind words. Definitely appreciate it. All right, Damien's getting the most comments award today. A few years ago, it would have been close to impossible to gain this knowledge so openly. Thanks to Dave and Jerry, to everyone else that contributes. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen, the whole idea here is to have the conversation. That's the first step in getting the word out there. And then as we have these conversations, then these, the word's going to travel. And as we travel and we get people like Jim and Damien and Joel and Henry, and we all start talking about it, just like social media, then it grows and grows and grows. You know what? We're just going to keep pushing the wedge deeper into this conversation until it splits in half and we're just running wild with uh, offsite construction leading the way. That's it's just how it has to be. I, don't, I, I just don't see it any other way in the future. It's not for everywhere. Maybe parts of it is, but... It can be used in most circumstances. Yeah. And the last thing I would say, actually, David, to any of the listeners that are on today, it's worth your while, actually, to go and look up the, the Structural Timber Association.co.uk in the UK. That, that, that's the, the one that Andrew Carpenter is, is the chairman of that represents the offsite industry in the UK. It's really worthwhile to go onto that site and see the technical data, but see the websites, see the buildings see the kind of work that they're doing and what and how offsite is actually changing the way um buildings are built in the UK it's it's a very very it's 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 a, it's a great resource of a, of a of a in fact it probably yeah. does an awful lot, an awful lot ways if you want to want to send somebody to a site that just disproves all the things that people say negatively about offsite that's the one to go to yeah 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 and Andrew Carpenter he's a force to be reckoned with as well 
No, knows his stuff. Knows his stuff very, very well. All right. So listen, Jerry, that is it. Time is up. We are going to see you in a couple of weeks back on the show with some other guests, Henry Mickelberg as well. I don't know if there's enough bandwidth or CPU power with these computers to take what we're about to bring in a couple of weeks. Uh, and if any of you are out there and your site builders, your stick builders, traditional way of construction, we want to have you on the show. Let's have an open dialogue, an open uh, conversation on this. I think Jerry's right. It's not, it's not a matter of uh, who's better or who's right. It's a matter of the facts. Let's talk about the facts. Let's talk about the process. And let's understand it because uh, I agree with that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to do these things. So, Jerry, if you know any uh, stick builders that you're looking to convert and they need a little help, let's bring them on the show. Maybe we can talk to them. Oh, I'll, I'll do my best to see if I can think of any, but most of them, I think, tend, tend to want to uh... yeah. <laughs> see the back of me. Well, well, we'll get it. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, listen, when you're passionate, you're passionate. And uh, it is what it is. We're going to keep pushing along. Jerry, thanks so much for being on the show. You're very welcome, Dave. Thank you very much. And everybody else that's listening there, thank you very much for the comments. Much appreciated. Yeah, the most definitely, most definitely. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. But do not leave yet because tomorrow we have Mayan Gordon on increasing influence tomorrow. Jerry Wan should pay attention tomorrow. Wan should pay attention tomorrow. She's the co-founder of Champion Empire, TikTok consultant. Seven hundred. Hey, what? You forgot. Oh, you. oh. Thank you. and the swag. Who wants so, swag? So, how do you put something up there? See, see, see who replies. You know, see, see who can get their first name up there now. They can give you the first comment and say, "I want that." All right, who's out there? Let's see. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hi to some people that are joining real quick. As always, Damon Lawn, Jerry Sharing, sharing real world experience and harsh truths, left and right. Been a pleasure listening in this morning. Thank you both, and looking forward to the next one. Jerry Dunn. Hey, or maybe it's Dune. Great discussion. Dunn, Dave. Dunn. That's done. Jerry Dunn. I love it. Can't wait to hear Jerry go head to head with any dinosaurs brave enough. <laughs> That's like going up against T Rex, right? <laughs> Damien says, fantastic. Damien also says, me. <laughs> no, there you go. Damien, send, right. me your, send me your address and it's on its way to you. And Craig Campbell wants that as well. Uh, okay, well, we Craig, gotta... I'll, get, I'll get two. I'll do two. Send me your address, Craig, and I'll do, I'll do it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay, Jennifer, that's the end. Three's a, three's a charm. That's it. That's it. I'm shutting it down. One, yeah. three, two, one. All right. You didn't get it in. It's over. All right. Well, you know what? My name was up there the whole time, Jerry. <laughs> well, you can argue that with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Listen, all seriousness, tomorrow, one o'clock, everybody, we have Maya and Gordon coming on. She's a TikTok consultant. She's also a LinkedIn consultant. She has 750 million video views, 2.2 million followers. Say it again. 2.2 million followers. You must be saying something if you get that many followers. So that's tomorrow, 1 p.m. on Increasing Influence with Miles Biggs with Biggs Ideas and myself. So please do not miss tomorrow. It's going to be a big show with an expert in the field. We can all learn from uh, Maya and Gordon. All right, Jerry, we expect Juan to be participating in that call tomorrow. Okay, I'll tell him. All right. All right, everybody. That's it. That's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to Forward uh, Solutions Group for all of their support and sponsoring us today. Please reach out to Joe Butler and Ben Hershey. They are two of the best in the industry when it comes to offsite construction, consulting, and manufacturing. I'm Dave Coopin. Cooper, the one and only Jerry McCahey's on the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks now.